Many of us have fallen into poverty, into lack because we, we don't understand how the kingdom is operating. The kingdom of God can take you from the background to the foreground. You are God's masterpiece. When God created you, he stepped back and he looked at you and he said, now, she's good. <laughs> He's good. Every day that you are God's masterpiece.
Glory. No Glory. more waiting. Yes. Amen. Welcome, celebrators here, family. Amen. And we are so expectant. God has been preparing us, and there is so much overflow. If you were here this weekend, you know I already started overflowing my message. So I know God has bring, brought together some great men to come and teach us the Word of God, and every single session is going to be power-packed. And we're a church that are not only hearers of the Word, but... So That's when right. we leave this building every day, particularly Friday night, we are going to spread whatever you have heard this week and let it out into your, into your nation, into your suburbs, wherever you are. Amen. Amen. Breakthrough. No more waiting. And here's something that I say at every Come Celebrate, and I want to say it again and again and again. Make a decision. Because we know Jesus warned us that the enemy comes to steal the word. Now, if you didn't know it was coming, then he can sucker punch you. But if you know Jesus is giving you a heads up, that's not a bad prophecy. That's not a bad confession on his part. He's not trying to give the devil any glory. He's just saying that it is possible the enemy will come when the word is sown. Now, you can choose. To be one of those four soils. You can be a hard heart. Reject what's said. You can be distracted by other things. You know, cell phones, messages and things. Other types of soil. Get in the way. Choke the word. Or you can make a decision. This week, I'm going to be good soil. Now, what does that mean practically? He said it's those that are given to the word. Listen to the word. Take the word and apply it. And that means you want to get every distraction out your way. I'll tell you now, one of the things that I've learned is just like anybody else, if you're on your little device and the things start pinging up, pinging up, oh, I must answer that now. Nothing is worth answering now. It's the Word of God. Switch off your social media. Unless you're posting something about the Word, don't go look and read about what Granny's saying and, and Uncle's saying. Oh, look, there's another. Oh, look, that's cute. Let's watch this video quickly. WhatsApp, whatever. No, it's focus on the Word. Amen. Well, I can do two things at once. No. Whatever you're listening to, that seed is what's going to go into your heart. And just settle it now. When you hear, no distractions. I can use my device. If my, my, my Bible's on there, that's fine. Notes, whatever. But it's not between you and me. This is re realistically for your own life. I'm trying to help you as your pastor to dig into the depth with everything that God has for you. Amen. You make that kind of quality decision, God will cover you. He'll look after you. He's got you. God's got you this week. Amen. Amen. So just rest in what He has got to give to you. Because He has so much in store for you. Whatever you are here to receive, open your heart and let Him in. Amen. Amen. Everybody say, Great beginnings. You know what God's been telling you to do. It's time to begin it. You are designed to do great exploits for God. It's not by power or by might, but by my spirit. Your potential is defined by what God has deposited on the inside of you. You've been blessed with every spiritual blessing. And all things are sustained or upheld by the Word. Speak to your future. This is the year. Stop wondering if it's time. It is time. It is a time for great beginnings. 2018. No more waiting. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. And today, once again, we're going to have a look at Come Celebrate 2018. This has been a great year of promise. God has said that we can expect great beginnings. And we've been saying 2018, no more waiting. It's a time to break forth into everything that God has given for us. And so we get together for the week around the Word of God. Got some great speakers for you to see. And so what I want to do is just give you some insight. We won't be able to show all of the program, all of the message, but in this short time, we're going to have a look at just some parts of the message. It's going to help build and strengthen your faith. Enjoy this. It is a time for great beginnings. 
2018. No more waiting. Family, we have to know what is the kingdom of God. If we don't know what it is, we're going to be in error and we're going to go with what mama said and granny said. And I go to this church because my granny used to go over there. And we are not going to see any power in it. So in order to seek the kingdom of God properly, number one, the kingdom of you have to know that the kingdom of God is a literal or a real kingdom that exists and God wants people to find it. It is not a, a fictitious kingdom somewhere. It is a place that exists. Now, we're going to find out where it is. Secondly, in order to seek anything successfully, including the kingdom of God, the seeker must have an understanding of what they are seeking. They must have an understanding of what they are seeking. They must know what they are seeking. For example, if the police is seeking for a criminal, you know, and they... They are looking for somebody maybe that is a serial killer and they want to, or somebody that has abducted somebody. They do a close-up profile of the person. The reason why they do have a close-up profile of that person, they want to identify him when they find him. If they don't have the profile of the person that they are looking for, they might find him and he can be standing naked right in front of them and they might not recognize him. So in order to seek anything successfully, you must actually know what you are looking for. Let's look quickly um, at Genesis chapter 3 from verse 5. Genesis from the King James Version. Genesis chapter 3 from verse 5. Be patient with me, family. I'm trying to teach you in a few minutes something that is really, really strong. For God doth know this is the, the snake or the devil talking to Eve. For God doth know that in the day you eat thereof, your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods. That's what I want you to see there. If you don't know what the kingdom looks like, you might be in it, but yet struggling, wondering where it is. Eve yeah. was already a king in the kingdom. She was already a god, but she did not realize she was a god. That's why she fell to the trap. Many of us have fallen into poverty, into lack, because we, we don't understand how the kingdom is operating. The kingdom of God can take you from the background to the foreground. Thirdly, once the kingdom is found, you don't keep seeking it because you have already found it. I'm getting to your religious cows today. They're going to move a little bit. I'll show you from Scripture. Let's go to, to, um, uh, to the book of Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Matthew chapter 13, verse 44. Jesus is giving an example of what the kingdom is. Matthew chapter 1, 3, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a treasure hid in a field, which when a man hath found, can you see he found it? He didn't just keep on seeking. So people think, they say, I'm going to the prayer meeting to seek the Lord. I'm going to the home cell to seek the Lord or to seek the kingdom. Or to, they, are, they, are, they are constantly trying to find it. Now, when you're constantly trying to find it or to seek it, you're going to sit in a place where you're always wondering where is God when it's already there with you. Verse 45. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a mentioned man seeking godly pearls. Watch what happens. Who, when he found one pearl, he found, the, he was seeking it, and he found it. You seek a job, and you find it. If you keep seeking a job, we will all know that we haven't found the job. So when the kingdom of God is sought, it will always be found. Now, Jesus, in um, Matthew chapter 6, verse 31, he preached the kingdom. Matthew 6, verse 31, he preached the kingdom. His apostle and dad said yesterday, uh, you know, Jesus never really preached about the new birth or about being born again. He only preached born again in a private conversation with Nicodemus. But he preached the kingdom. Therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink 
wherewithal shall we be clothed? You see, in these years that I was struggling, I thought I was seeking the kingdom because I would wake up four in the morning and I'd pray to God, Father, come and help me with my finances. Father, come and help me with my wife. Come, Father, come and help me with all these things. And, and I'm, I'm praying in the morning and I'm seeking, you know, Father, come and help me. And after a while, I realized that the Lord said to me, have you figured out every time you pray in your prayer time, you're always asking me to come and help you. So you're actually asking me to come and help you in your kingdom. Because whenever we go before God, we are, Father, come and help. Now, God wants to help you. You know, don't, he wants to do it. But however, if your prayer life only stays in a place where you're asking him to come in to build your kingdom or your thing, then you're actually building your kingdom. That is the place where dad was saying, you are not aligned. You have to align your thinking with the kingdom. So you preached about the kingdom. Now, I want you to look at um, the book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. The book of Luke, chapter 17, verse 20. This is very, very profound in the King James Version again because it explains it the way it should be. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, watch here, they used the word demanded. The Pharisees demanded, and they said to him, where, when the king, where, they demanded, ask him, when is the kingdom of God shall come? They demanded, they didn't come asking nicely, they demanded it because he had preached it so much that everybody around him, even the Pharisees, could actually see that the kingdom is something that really exists. So they demanded, man, dude, you've been preaching this all the time, telling us about this kingdom, please show us the kingdom. So he answered them and he said unto them, watch this, the kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, oh, Lord, here it is, oh, Lord, here, there it is. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. So the kingdom of God is literally reigning in you. Now, I'm not going to go to the scripture because of what I need, to, all the things that I need to get into today. When you look at the mother of John and James, remember, she went to Jesus and he said to Jesus, I want to talk to you about something. And the Lord said, speak. And he said, is it okay if my child, one who sit on your left, one who sit on the right hand of your kingdom, they believed it so much that they knew it was literal to a point where she jumped the queue to go and speak to Jesus so that Jesus can give them positions in his kingdom. When you read on the scripture, the other disciples got so angry with them because they said, dude, we, we thought we were, were partners. How dare you jump the queue and you want to take a, our place in the kingdom? They so not help with it because to them the kingdom was real. It wasn't something that they were talking about. So we figure out that the kingdom is real. Now, the devils, the reason why a lot of Christians are failing in life, in ma many Christians all over the world, it is because they think, you know, God is this mystic thing, this thing, the spooky, you know, you know like, we are, oh, we are just in a bubble type of thing. God is organized. He runs a kingdom that is organized, that has got roads, whatever. It's organized, the kingdom that he runs. Now, Satan is very wise. He knows God has got a kingdom. And that's why he also got a kingdom and is very aware of his, the way his kingdom works. Now, Satan offered Jesus the kingdoms of this world. God is not in charge of the kingdoms of this world. If you ask people, you know, who, who did, who, what, what happened to, you know, to, um, you know, uh, one of these countries, they'll tell you, oh, God brought the earthquake. No, God did not bring the earthquake because 2 Corinthians 4, 4 says, Satan is the God of this world. He's in charge. He's illegal, but he's legal because Adam turned over the whole thing to him. So he's in charge of this whole thing. He knows he's the God of this world. He's causing chaos in this world. And if you don't understand your kingdom, you've got no power to defeat him, even if you think you've got the power. He knows his kingdom. He knows he's God over the world. He knows he's in charge over the earth. Uh, tell me, family, how much poverty is in heaven? Let's say 1%. Zero. Zero. How much crime in heaven? One, two, maybe three percent will be good, right? Zero crime in heaven because wherever God rules, there's hundred percent peace. 
So we know that God is not reigning over the kingdoms because of the poverty. Somebody says, what about the dying babies over there and over there? No, God is still not in charge. Adam gave the thing over to the devil. Now, <laughs> you're going to be excited in a moment because we're getting to the real exciting stuff. To be effective in pursuing the kingdom, we must know what it is and how it works. The word kingdom is the two words king and dom, D-O-M. King meaning ruler and dom is where we get the words dominion, domain. You know, when you say, oh, I've got my domain on the, you know, on the internet, you've got your domain. It means that's the little area of the internet that you rule. <laughs> Amen. And... That's where we get the word dominate or domicile, which is your address. You know, so where God, so when, God, when we say kingdom, we're actually talking about the king's address, the, where the king reigns, where, where he's in charge. So a kingdom is any place a king dominates his sovereignty, or, or in Hebrew, call it Rada, which is in chapter 1 of uh, verse 26 of Genesis. The king has got absolute control, and he makes all the decision in the kingdom. Because of all that I've said, now we need to look at the following conclusions. The Bible then is not a book about a religion or a religious sect. Number one, the Bible is not a book about a religion or a religious sect. I was taught, you know, by one guy when I first came into the church because, I, you know, I'd never really read my Bible. So the guy taught me and he says to me, the Bible stands for basic instruction before leaving earth. How many of you have heard that? before. I'm here to tell that cow that is not true. <laughs> the Bible is not just here to tell you how to just literally just have this mediocre lifestyle, then one day you go to heaven. God does not need you there. Yes, you are not supposed to be going there. You are from there. Yes. So you're still figuring out in your mind, I need to get it. No, you have been sent from there to here. So now, the Bible is not a religious book. And number two, the Bible is called a testament or a covenant. We know we've got the first testament and the, and the, you know, the, the old and the, and the new. It's a testament which is a covenant, which is a contract or a constitution. Only countries have constitutions. So a constitution is a body of fundamental principles or established precedent upon which an organization is acknowledged to be run. So therefore, the Bible is a constitution of heaven upon which heaven is acknowledged to be run. It is not just a book. It is a constitution upon which heaven is acknowledged to be run. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 15. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 11 verse 15. So next time you lift up your Bible at home, you are lifting up a constitution of the kingdom that you belong to. Oh, man, I need to accelerate because there's so much I need to get to. And truly, if they had been mindful, he's talking about the ancients, watch here. And truly, if they had been mindful of the country from whence they came out, they might have had an opportunity to have returned. But watch it, verse 16. But now they desire a better country that is a heavenly wherefore God is not ashamed to call them their God now we stop there watch here God is saying that there's a country that God has therefore the Bible is a constitution of that country which is trying to bring into this earth somebody with me Let's go a bit down, and you see what it says here. Um, we're still in verse 16, but just look. For he has prepared for them a city. Where do you think we get city of Cape Town? It's not our original plan. There is already a city prepared. Why? Because we are in a real, literal kingdom. All right, we're going somewhere here. Because someone's saying, okay, that city is somewhere in heaven. I'm going to go there. So the book, the Bible is a testament or a covenant or a constitution. It's a constitution of heaven. And of the people that stay here on earth, they need to know what their, the Constitution says. Now, the Bible is about a king who rules a kingdom. Say that to your neighbor. The Bible is about a king who rules a kingdom. You will never ever understand 
the Bible if you don't realize that the Bible is about a king who rules a kingdom. Now, if you don't understand the difference between a kingdom and a democratic society, you're going to get to a place where you are trying to be in the kingdom with a democratic mindset and you don't see the benefits of the kingdom. Number one, the term king is only used in a kingdom, not in a democratic state. The name king or the term king is only used in a kingdom, not in a democratic state. In a democracy, we call them president or prime minister or whatever the name we call them. Why do we call them president? Because president is an individual that has been elected to the highest office in a country. In the kingdom, we don't vote in the king. We don't come with our little cars and say, okay, we don't like that pastor, we're going to get a new one in the kingdom. In the kingdom, we call, we call him king. Now, the term Lord is also a kingdom term. You must understand all these terms, family. In democracy, we don't care, care, call anyone Lord. But in the kingdom, the, name, the, the term Lord is only for the kingdom. That term Lord is the Hebrew word Adonai. Simply meaning honor, O W N E R, honor. The name Lord means honor. So if you say it here to you, oh, Jesus, my Lord, you are saying to him, Jesus, you own me. Yeah. So next time you want to stop tithing, just go to the ones who own you and ask him, sir, I really don't want to tithe this month and hear what he's going to say because he now owns you. In the kingdom, when you come to church, Father, my Lord, you are actually referring to him as the one who owns you. Very important, because a lot of born-again people, they use these terms without understanding what they mean. Now, if you look at earthly kingdoms, earthly kingdoms, earthly monarch, you know, monarchs, like, for example, I like to use the English monarchy because, you know, it's really a well-established monarchy. It's coming hundreds of years. If you look at it, you will see there that they use those terms. They use king. They use the term lord as well. Right now next to, to the building, and not far from here, we've got a person who owns a hotel, Lord Charles Hotel. You know where it comes from? UK. Lord Charles. Lord Charles Henry Somerset is his name. Lord Charles Henry Somerset. Isn't it amazing I'm teaching you something in Somerset West? <laughs> so he's Lord. Why? Because he comes from a kingdom. Those terms are used only for kingdom purposes. In KwaZulu Natal. Where I come from, we've got the kingdom of the Zulu. It's a kingdom. And in that kingdom, Pastor Liesl and I, we own a property in where the, the, you know, the, the king, they call it the, the Gonyama Trust. It's a trust owned by the king. Gonyama means king. So it's a trust owned by the king. That trust is owned by the king. So when you, own, when you get land from the king, you get it for a very good price. We don't stay there, but we've got land there. And we've got a house there. The house belongs to you, but the land always belongs to the king. You are not never the owner because he's lord over that land. We look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are not seen. Stop walking beneath your status. You are a royal family. You are a king. You carry his life inside of you because the greater one lives in you. He's waiting for the body to rise up and realize who you are. Speak something into existence that has not yet been manifested. And when you begin to release that word from out of your mouth, you will see your life go to a whole nother level. Satan, you give it back. Double everything. Somebody stand up and shout. Break forth. No more waiting. Break forth. No more waiting. It's payback time. Shout out double. 2018. No more waiting. Great beginnings. I break four. You know, I, I've, I've said it again and again and again. This program is just too short to be able to show you everything. And yet we had such a download. Think about it. From Monday to Friday, every day, we had morning and evening sessions. Monday night, Tuesday to Friday, mornings and evenings. A lot of word was imparted. And so we're giving you some insight to it here on the program. 
But I want you to get the fullness of the messages. So get a hold of your set today. You can get on CD, even on MP3. You know how this works. It's on a USB stick. You stick it in your computer and get it onto your phone, into your car, so that you can listen to it again and again and again. These promises are for all of us as the body of Christ. And I want you to break forth into your great beginning. This is the year of 2018. No more waiting. And so get your set today. It's going to help build and encourage your faith. Now, friend, if you've not yet given your life to Jesus, I want you to know He loves you. He died for you, gave His life for you, and then rose from the dead, proving that your sins are forgiven. Today, all you have to do is believe that. The Bible says, believe that with your heart, confess it with your mouth, and you will be saved. And so I want to lead you in that prayer right now. Let's pray it together. Yes, today, while you're watching, say this out loud with me. Dear Jesus, thank you. You died for me. You gave your life for me. And then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe you are my Lord. You are my Savior. From this day on, I live for you, to serve you, to worship you. One day I will leave this earth and I'll stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Well, praise God. If that's the first time you prayed that prayer, I have a gift for you here today. It is something that's going to help build and develop your faith. It explains to you what happened, some guidelines now that you are a Christian. A way to read your Bible from cover to cover just by doing a little portion of reading every single day. In one year, you'll get through your entire Bible. Isn't that awesome? And then this wonderful, encouraging CD. That, that's a free gift I want to sow into your life. If you write to me at the address over there or call us on that phone number, as soon as we got your details, we'll send that to you and we'll be with you in a few days' time. Well, we are having a wonderful time having a look back at Come Celebrate 2018. We were breaking forth and we still are. The Word is so powerful and so rich. We had some great speakers here imparting the Word of Faith for this wonderful year where we can expect great beginnings. And I wanted you to be a part of it as well. Now, we can't, just time-wise, we won't be able to show all of the messages. And we're just having a look at some parts of it. And this is our next speaker. You're going to enjoy this. I'll see you right on. It is a time for great beginnings. 2018. No more waiting. If you will go to Ephesians chapter 2, one verse there, verse 10, in the NIV, it says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do bad works. Do you have your Bible there? Well, let's read it again. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So the assignment that God has given each and every one of us to perform on the earth, God, way before you were born, He had already empowered you to do what he's asking you to do. Hmm. <laughs> I know what some of you are thinking, well, you know, we'll never get that land, we'll never get that land, you know. I'll never be blessed because you look at your circumstance. But, 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 but Pastor, be before you and your wife were born, before there was ever a Bay Christian family church. God created you guys in Christ Jesus to do good works. But the good works that he's asking you to do to build and to get the gospel out through the internet and to get the gospel out through South Africa and the nations of the world, he has already prepared you before you were born. For those of you who are business owners, for those of you who desire to own a business, for those of you who are working, running a family, or whatever you are doing right now in life, you have the ability to perform the duties. I know sometimes you don't feel like you do. You don't feel like you have the strength. You're stressed out and you don't think that you can accomplish the work. But according to this verse here, it is saying, which God prepared in advance. Yes, so in other words, 
the Bible is telling us the ability to perform was already given in advance. Oh, you didn't get that, man. The ability to do what you are required to do was given to you in advance. So for those of you who desire to accomplish great things, I don't know what that, that thing or things may be, you have the ability to do it. Would, would you just look at your neighbor and say, don't be scared? Don't be scared. Why are you so scared of what's before you? One translation of that same verse, Ephesians 2.10 you know, really just blessed me because it says, we are God's masterpiece. Handiwork, masterpiece. Masterpiece. Do you really know who you are? I don't think half of you know who you are. You just think, well, I'm just a woman. I'm just a man. You know, I just go to big Christian family church. No, you're more than that. You are God's masterpiece. Because Genesis 1 tells us that everything God did when he created it, he stepped back and he said, whoa, that's good. <laughs> so even though people may look at you, you're ugly, you're this, you're that. When God created you, he stepped back and he looked at you and he said, now, she's good. <laughs> He's good. <laughs> Look at the neighbor and say, I'm good. Because <laughs> they, they may not know if they're good. So you got to declare every day that you are God's masterpiece. When you recognize that as a woman, you will never rely on just a man to tell you who you are. That's a good place to shout. When you know that you are God's masterpiece, you don't need a man to tell you, hey, you know you're cute. Because when he says you're cute, you're going to say, oh, I know. I know. <laughs> He's just confirming what you already know. Because you're what? God's masterpiece. I want every woman to stand up right now. Every woman, if you're a woman in the house, Make some noise if you know you're God's masterpiece. Yes, you are. Would you just high five a woman next to you and say, Girl, I'm God's masterpiece. Oh, I was uniquely designed by God. Now sit down, ladies, for a moment. I want all the men in the house to stand. Come on, brothers, make some noise if you're God's masterpiece. Would you now, now don't, don't high five another man. Just go like this. Brother, I'm God's masterpiece. Come on now. Give him that little manly handshake. <laughs> you may be seated, man. It says we are God's masterpiece. So there are four things we can learn from this passage of Scripture. Number one, we're God's masterpiece. This simply means each of us was uniquely designed by God. He formed us. He created us. He wired us. He formed us. He created us. He wired us. He wired us in a very unique way. See, you go years ago when I was a little boy, I never really, honestly, truly loved me. I didn't. I didn't love me. Because my life was controlled by the opinions of people around me. <laughs> so I felt that I wasn't handsome. I wasn't, I didn't have the qualities to become great. I, I just felt that I was really not special. But the more I got into the Word of God, and I realized that there are people who are used by Satan to challenge your DNA. Uh, 
There are people who are used by the devil to go around and say, well, you know, you're not supposed to be like that. There are people who try to put you in a box. And they size up the box. And they say, you can only live and function in this perimeter. You, you can't go outside of it. But I love the theme of your conference, Breakout. And God sent me all the way from the United States of America to South Africa to tell people it's time you lift your fate foot, foot and kick every barrier down and break out. Break out of the mindset that the enemy is trying to control you with. I finally had to accept that, that I am God's masterpiece. He wired me. There's only one me. I don't ever want to be like Dr. Allen. You shouldn't want to be like me. You shouldn't want to be like your brother, your sister. No. You are wired in a unique way. That's why God gave you a unique thumbprint. If he wanted you to be your neighbor, he would have made sure your neighbor and your thumbprint are the same. Let's look at your neighbor and say, just be yourself. Stop trying to imitate people. And that's why the world, the world creates an image where they want you to imitate famous people. Well, if that one is famous, everybody want to be that person. Everybody want to be that person. No, just be yourself. My goodness, it is not wise to be a cheap copy of somebody else. Be an original. When you step out of your house every day, the devil must be nervous saying, oh, she got up this morning, he got up this morning. Don't try to be somebody else. He wired you. You are God's masterpiece because God created you himself. Now, if you embrace the fact that you are God's masterpiece, you will never live beneath the life God has for you. Never. When you receive that, when you understand that God's got a plan for your life, you will never, ever allow the enemy to cause you to live beyond the life that he has for you. And I know what you're saying, but how can I embrace this idea, pastor? Because I go through so many things in life. Well, what does the issues of life got to do with what God has already done for you? I mean, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait. Okay, remember that thought I just told you that if somebody sent me from the United States with a million dollars to give to you, right? And, and, if, and if it's really true, let's say your name was literally on a check that was good and it was one million U.S. dollars. Now, if you were home last night and I heard you guys haven't had rain in a long time, you're in a drought now. But what happens if God just opened up the heavens and it was thunderstorm, it was raining, and there were floods all over Cape Town? Would you sit in your house this evening and say, well, you know, I can't go to church tonight. I guess I'll miss that $1 million tonight. I won't go. I, I just, I'll just wait till the next time he comes back. Come on now. How many of you know you'll do anything, man? I'll take my refrigerator out and make it in a boat. Glory to God. I, what? I'll be, I'll be swimming to this church to get my million dollars. That's the same thing when it comes to the things of God. Don't let anything stop you from receiving from God. Glory to God. Whatever God's got for you, go get it. Would you just prophesy to somebody and tell them whatever God's got for you, go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Don't let anything in life block you from receiving the blessing. Because you're God's masterpiece. So one of the things I want to share with you, even though you were uniquely designed by God, your perception can convince you otherwise. You can also allow people and the challenges of life to convince you otherwise 
that, that, you know, maybe, maybe you're not blessed. Maybe you will not overcome the issues of life. However, you can take your life to the next level if you know who you are in Christ Jesus, that you are God's masterpiece. The church has failed to understand kingdom principles. And because we don't understand who we are as children of God in the kingdom of God, we then live as if we are just South African citizens. And if you are living as just a South African uh, citizen, then what you have done, you have lowered your potential. Because you know South Africa is in deep trouble financially. Oh, you're not with me. That means the government doesn't have all the resources to take care of all of this citizen. So if you step out of the kingdom of God and just start living in the kingdom of South Africa, then you are subjected to the benefits which are limited in South Africa. But oh, if you ever live in the kingdom of God, he says he shall supply all of your needs regardless of what's happening in South Africa. God says I will see to it that all of your needs will be met. Somebody ought to give him praise in this house. My goodness. That's some encouraging word, my friend. In the same way, I believe Psalm 139 states, it says here in verse 13, for you formed me in the inward parts. I love it. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. In other words, what the psalmist was really trying to do was really trying to, uh, if you will, give uh, support to what the Apostle Paul was saying in Ephesians chapter 2. He was saying, wait a minute now, I'm not supposed to be walking around as if I don't know who I am, that I'm God's masterpiece, and no matter what is confronting me now, I must realize that God formed my innermost parts, and he knitted me together. He was the one who actually sat down and made sure every part of me, he designed it. Watch this. This will bless you, man. He designed you. He knitted you to, together. And when the person who knit you together or make you together can also fix anything that's wrong with you. Notice when you have a car, right? When you have, this is so good, man. This is so good. You buy a car, right? And it happens. I don't care where you live. When you buy a car, all right, you know that the car, in, in using it to accomplish your goal, to take you from point A to point B, over a certain couple of mileage and so forth, you're going to have to take the car in to service. Yeah. Oil change get the brakes pad changed and so forth. But when your car breaks down, you don't take your car to a baker to have a baker to fix it because the baker doesn't have the experience to fix a car. So why are you taking yourself to someone or sources that can't fix you? Take it to the manufacturer. Glory, 2018, glory, no glory. more waiting. We're so excited for Come Celebrate. Woo! Yes. Welcome Celebrators, your family. Amen. And we are so expectant. Make a decision. This week, I'm going to be good soil. God's got you this week. Amen. He has so much in store. For you. We look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are not seen. Stop walking beneath your status. You are a royal family. You are a king. You carry his life inside of you. 
because the greater one lives in you. He's waiting for the body to rise up and realize who you are. Speak something into existence that has not yet been manifested. And when you begin to release that word from out of your mouth, you will see your life go to a whole nother level. Satan, you give him back double everything. Somebody stand up and shout. Break forth. No more waiting. Break forth. No more waiting. It's payback time. Shout out double. 2018. No more waiting. Great beginnings. I break forth. 2018. No more waiting. That is God's promise to us. When He tells us that this is a year we can expect great beginnings. Remember this. Great beginnings come from a release of what God has already established in our lives. He has spoken a word and that word has come forth as seed. Now, any harvest that we receive in our lives has to come from a seed. That is a covenant promise of God. It's not even, it really is not a promise because covenant is an agreement and it's God, it's, it's a law. In other words, if you sow a seed, you don't have to wait for God to agree for that seed to grow. It's designed within that seed to produce. Even an unbeliever sows uh, wheat and he'll get a wheat crop. So here's the thing. It is a law that God has established that whatever you sow, you will reap. And so if He's given you a promise of a great harvest, the only way for Him to bring that harvest forth is through sowing a seed. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6, it says, He who sows sparingly, will also reap sparingly. He who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. That's why it says in verse 7, so let each one give. So he links our giving with seed sowing. So we have a promise from God, but to produce the harvest of that requires our sowing, our giving, that each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly of necessity. God loves a cheerful giver. Now why? Now God is able to make grace abound towards you, that you always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. Now you keep reading all the way down. It says, He who gives seed to the sower and bread for food will cause that seed to multiply. He'll bring forth the harvest. So it begins with you and me. So today, as this is our giving day here at Allen Bag Ministries, every seed that you sow into this ministry, make sure that we can keep preaching the Word of God. So you are a part of preaching the Word. So you are sowing the giving of the Word of God. So someone's going to get saved. Someone's going to get healed. Someone's going to get delivered. That is part of your spiritual harvest. But not only that, there is the natural harvest as well. God will cause that seed to multiply in your life. It's designed to produce exactly what you need, whether you need a house or a car, a job, healing in your body, whatever it is, that harvest is going to come forward because you trusted God and has demonstrated in your sowing of your seed. And so as you partner with us today, I want to pray in agreement with you. If you are giving today for your first time, or even if it's again, there's the details on the screen. You go straight to our website. It's very easy. And so I want to pray this prayer over you now. Father, I pray for my dear partner, those that are giving today, our friends in the ministry, I call them blessed in the name of Jesus. The seed is designed to produce, and I declare that that seed is alive right now, bringing the harvest to pass. And I thank you that every need in that household is supplied. My God, you shall supply all their need according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It's done. We agree together on that and we praise you for it, Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. It is done. You agree with me? Amen. Remember that this is the weekend. We're going to be getting together in our various places of worship. I encourage you be a part of a Spirit-filled Word teaching church. And if you are in Cape Town, you're welcome to come and visit us. There are the details on the screen. And if I am in the building, Come and shake my hand. I'd love to meet you. Other than that, you have a great weekend. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. 
The Bay Christian Family Church is one church in many locations. With the help of technology and God's powerful grace at work, you can now fellowship with family at the Bay Christian Family Church at our many locations. Many locations, one church, one vision. It is one church, multiple locations. Join us in the Helderberg area at Section 3 Gan Center on Saturday evenings, Sunday mornings and Sunday evenings. People connecting with people. Wherever you're able to connect, join us here at the Bay Christian Family Church for a powerful time in both praise and worship as well as in God's life-changing Word. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details.